smooth like if a jet plane had went over him. This way I felt the new Freeland. And as much as he said he was afraid of the red war coming back, he felt asleep before I did. Maybe he passed it to me, because as much lack of concern I pretended, I felt some kind of anguish looking at the door. Last it until I forgot what I was worried about and I felt asleep too. The lights came on by themselves before dawn. Like dropping a hint to get up, I supposed. Maybe they had been on for a long time I had been awake, but I had the impression they hadn't. What time is it? Freeland moving about asked. I have no idea it might be dawning. I was trying to find a window to check it. It must be the instinct. He got up looking for it too. This looks like a prison, he concluded. This is a factory, not a hotel. I refuse it. And we are slaves, not tourists. He put an end. And he probably was right. But the delicious smell clouded our reasoning and it aroused us more than the persistent white light that threatened from the ceiling had done. We left the room not noticing the difference with the prior night. We thought there must be activity, people running from one side to the other, rocket, and there wasn't, just empty and shiny corridors. I think the smell comes from here, Freeland pulled me. It was a large canteen with a self-service area with showcases full of appetizing food. It smelled of coffee, of cocoa and orange juice and however, nobody. What do we do? Freeland asked. I'm starving, let's have a try, I answered. I answered talking about trying to approach the service line and pick something to eat. It was plenty of food and we too neither were that good eaters, so they missed our share. I didn't think it twice. Freeland tried to resist a bit more, but he had the tray on his hands when I was jumping over the milk bones. And nothing happened. Nothing happened either when we finished our meal and threw the leftovers in the dustbin and the dishes in the sink. Just silence and powerful light that followed us along the empty corridor. This is a labyrinth. They should put some sign showing at least the way out. Freeland looked around. I think this is a different corridor. There aren't doors here, I said. I see. What I don't see that clear is where we are heading to, he muttered. We were heading ahead. We didn't have anything else to do. The facilities should be huge. We walked for more than a hundred meters straight. We turned and walked for just as much. Once over the second corner, we saw a change of texture. Should we go on? Prelan asked. Yes, we should. I almost ordered. Well, I'm going. The last eyebrow told me to take it easy, but I didn't care. I kept on going. He too. I'm almost afraid of learning what is this, he said. Whatever. But that isn't going to stop us, is it? I raised my eyebrow, I that also knew how. The last smiled. The door waiting for us at the end of the corridor opened as soon as we got near. We have to think about this thing of this place programming recognizes you. Freeland said in my ear. Sure, but not now. I made him focus. We were crossing by a door facing the unknown. That wasn't the right moment. There wasn't much either. A computer's room. Or that was what it looked like. The place was empty, but the walls were full of hundreds of thousands of colored flicking lights. In silence, there was also silence. Do you know about these things? I asked Freeland. Honestly, no. 
besides radio stations and outdoor motors, he said, help mocking my question. We went ahead trying to read in some label written in a foreign language the meaning of that technology. Good morning, a female voice said. Good morning, we answered, turning around to find her. The room is static. Electricity level is not optimum for your systems. You should leave the room as soon as possible. The female voice said, We have to verify some data. I said, but we cannot find the machine. Come to the control office. You can make the verifications you wish from here. The woman said, Fine. Relan said, pulling me. No, we want to see the machines. I resisted, even though I hadn't the slightest idea about that trash. Leave the room, please. The doors will close automatically in 20 seconds. It's for your own safety. The voice threatened. Fine! Relan shouted, dragging me.